Now let's go over a transaction in just a little bit more detail. So first of all, I want to remind you that all digital currency is the same as a cash transaction. So we don't have any credit, which is a great thing. Just think if the whole world was not operating on credit. Now that may not be possible. You can still use your credit cards and everything, but not as part of the digital currency transaction. Just so, just so you know that, okay? Certainly you don't have to buy everything through the club with digital currency. You can buy any way you want to. This is just a convenience uh, for us, and you'll understand it more as we get going, but the more you use it, the more you'll want to use it. So every user has a numbered client wallet, and what I've done over there is circled them, the sending in red and the receiving in green. But what's important here is it's not like your bank account. It is not necessary for the user to have any personal identification attached to the wallet, and a client can have any number of multiple wallets that they want because we're just, you know, it's like a serial code on a dollar bill. It doesn't matter who you are, is that, that you have that dollar bill and you're giving it to somebody else. It's the same thing here. All you want to do is get their number if you want to send them something or they need to get your number if they send it to you. They don't need to know who you are. It's irrelevant. Now the wallet also has a, a public number, which is the number that you give people, and a private number. And I don't, didn't stress this enough, but that private number is unique. That's one that's generated by the system. So every single transaction is unique, which makes it the unique transaction. And that's how all the people around the world track that when they verify what's going on there. Okay, so it's got that and there's, you can see those keys and that's what I'm referring there to. The value can only be pushed from a wallet client who wants to send money to a receiving client's wallet. That's all that can happen. So that, that, I put that red around you know, the idea that we're going to send some money up to somebody. Okay. The center enters the receiver's number. So you have to call the receiver up, say, well, give me your number or get it in an email or scan it in. There's so many ways to get their number. But once you have the number, that doesn't mean you can you can't pull anything out of their account. It's just now you've got their number so you know how to send them the stuff. So what you want to do is put that into your wallet and you're going to hit the send button. Once it does that, the system attaches the sender's private number, which is that unique code that's an encrypted identifier as to where it's coming from. The amount is deducted from the sender's balance. So you can see there we take out, say, $100 from the sender side of things. Next step then is the system uses the receiver's private decryption key to allow, allow the coin or value to be put in the receiver's wallet and the balance is increased by that amount. So all we've done here is move $100 from one wallet and put that into another wallet. And that's basically the whole idea of a transaction. So where we go from here then is all transactions are updated in blocks of one minute and continuous ledger, which is open to all participants in the network, including time, date, participants, numbers. And again, when we talk about participants, not names, it's the, the, the numbers that they're using and uh, the amount of every single transaction. So that's the encrypted number and the number of the wallets that are involved. So anyway, all the information is there to be seen. Now then what we have is we have these maintainers. They're the people who are keeping the ledger accurate and they maintain the ledger through a sales safe mathematical algorithm, verify each transaction's accuracy. If something is wrong, they will refuse to incorporate the transaction into the ledger. So then what happens is it goes around and I put some check marks here to show that these uh, people, these miners or these stakers are out there verifying the transaction. When enough of them have verified that, what they do is put a virtual stamp on it. And it's kind of like have a notary present at every single transaction. But again, it's not any one person. It's the whole network that is verifying that this transaction is true. Once that is done, okay, this single transaction is complete. Uh, it does not authorize any future transaction. It doesn't expose anybody's identity because each particular encrypted key is new each time. Every single transaction stands alone. And those are all the steps of a transaction. And what that's happened, it's complete. And the only way you can do is start over again. So everything's back down to zero and it moves around it. And the whole ledger is seen by everybody. So all of that is what's unique about the decentralized payment solution. Each one is done and has to be completely started over again with each transaction. All right, so let's talk about now a client wallet. I really want to get this across. So first of all, the number of places you can get a wallet. So here you could go, and I'm just going to show you this one. Now, if you look at the green thing on the bottom, what well, that is synchronizing the blockchain. Every wallet all around the world has all of the transactions in the blockchain. And sometimes those take a long time to load up if you're just getting started because it's, it's loading up the whole history of the blockchain into every, every single wallet so that it's available for everybody. That's the whole concept, okay? See those, how the hands are receiving or the hands are uh, giving. So you're either sending or you're receiving coin back and forth. Very, very easy to track. So if you want to send some coin, what you've got to do is then you've got to go out there and get someone's number that you want to send that to. That you can scan that in, they can email it to you, they can text it to you. There's many, many ways of getting their number. You can't do anything with that number except plug it in to your wallet to send it. 
So that would be if you want to send to someone else. But here's, here's another way of looking at that. You want to receive coin from someone else. Well, what you would do is send your number to them. They would put it in, and you can see up here where it says receive coins. So you could just go down here and say copy my address, and boom, that would be emailed out to them. They then would go ahead and put that in, and they would hit send. For example, that this is you, so they take your number. They hit send, and all of a sudden, those are sent down to you. They put the amount they want to do. They agree to the transaction, and they send the transaction. Now, one other thing that, that everyone should do is do an Authy. An Authy is where you've hooked up your wallet it to your phone okay so every, it knows your phone number so every time you do a transaction if you you should you know you can go in and authorize it by going to your phone clicking your Authy app and a number will come up and you'll be able to put that number into your wallet because that number is changing all the time and it's, it's synchronized with each wallet so it knows that you know the number that's on your phone is the number that's available now and only you have that number you put that in there so again this is another level of security this is where that would happen, where you would do an Authy, okay? And you can either do a, a Google authorization or authentication, that's one, or you can do an Authy. Okay, so then this is what happens. There, you can go back and you can look later, and that would be the transaction that you just received that coin. Uh, and, and again, look how small I did. I think it was 20 cents or 0.2 coins or whatever it was. That's the nice thing. Remember we talked about microtransactions? Just go ahead and try and send a 25 cents to somebody. It's, it's not possible. And that's how simple it is. It's as simple as getting somebody's number, putting it into a wallet, and pushing send. And remember, it can only go one direction. You can only push coin. You cannot pull from anybody. All right, so that is pretty much it. If you want to know more, we've got lots of videos on YouTube. But also go just search Bitcoin, blockchain, whatever, and you'll find a lot. Some of them are done very concisely, right to the point. And now that you've got an overview of it all, you'll certainly understand it.